This is the routine in this family's life. Emeka, the man of the house, wakes up very early every working day to beat the mad Lagos traffic in order to make it to work in time. Uju, his wife, is still asleep. She does not wake up until 7 a.m. Nkechi is Uju's younger sister. She works very hard in the house, but she's grateful to her sister for taking her in and to Emeka for sponsoring her education. She does not mind doing all of the housework at all. In fact, she's glad to be useful around the house. Kiss still asleep? Yes, sir. I'll wake them up now for school. Okay. Take my laptop and the charger and put it inside the laptop bag in the car. Emeka's wife, Uju, is a very hard-working woman who is permanently overwhelmed with work. She walks from sun up to sundown and returns home very late, every night, very tired. Can you read this? How are you? Fine. How was school today? Fine, sister. Fine. Okay, girls, you know what you do now? You go home with her, yeah? And I'll see you later. So take your bath. 
And in case you please, let me help out with that. You make sure you take their back before they hit their feet. Yes, sister. And in case you please, 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 don't let them go out of the house for any reason to play with those other kids. Yes, sister. Did you hear me? Yes, sister. Are you sure you heard me? I heard you, sister. No problem. Okay. Mommy, I hope you'll come back early today. Don't worry, I'll come back early. Before you sleep, I'll be home. Yeah? Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. See you later. Okay. Please help me take care of them very well. I will do just Thank you. Sister. Nkechi acts as a mother of thought to her sister's kids. They spend more time with her than with their mother. She bathes them, feeds and cares for them in every way, as their mother is a very busy woman. Nkechi does a good job by them. You like it? Nkechi, as it turns out, is the all-round engine room of the family. She's the one that cooks and serves not just the kids but everybody, including Emeka and her sister when she returns from the shop. It's a good arrangement that satisfies everybody, including Nkechi herself. Have you done your homework? Auntie is helping me. Okay, that is very good. Okay, you go back and continue with your homework. Daddy needs to go inside and freshen up. Okay, Chi? Sir? Share this with them. Oh, okay, sir. Reflecting on something from the office. Trouble? No. Well, kind of. It's a little complicated. How? He's my boss. He's making a fool of himself before everybody. What's annoying is that he wants to drag me into it. How? It's about this lady. She has a big behind. <laughs> Seriously. He's sticking out like a mile behind her. <laughs> How about that? What does that have to do with you? She took quite a liking to me and she brings snacks that she prepares from home to the office and she shares it with me. Hmm. She's nice. Yeah, but why only me? She doesn't give it to anyone else. Seriously. 
Maybe she likes you. Maybe she really, really likes you. That is the obvious point. But I didn't notice. I didn't know. Hmm. Well, that... Seriously, my mind never went there at all. Anyway, my, my boss likes her, but she doesn't like him. How does it concern you? He sees me as competition. He thinks I'm going out with her and he's trying to make trouble for me. Hmm. Brother, be careful. Your job is very mm -hmm. important. Why don't you tell him there's nothing going on between you two? He has not come out directly to attack me. So going to tell him anything would be an affront. What are you going to do now? Frankly, I don't know yet. Your job is very important, brother. Why don't you stop associating with her? She's a nice person. Are you sure? What? You think I like her? <laughs> well... I don't like fat women. Well, you say she has a big... I don't like them that big. I prefer them moderate and fair. Anyway, I'm married, mm -hmm. so what's my business looking outside? What about your boss? Is he not married? He has two wives and many children. <laughs> the man is a goat. Well, most men these days are not faithful. I'm not surprised. That is not true. Ha, <laughs> ah, brother, let's not even go there. Most girls in my, in my, in my school have high pads. They are being taken care of by married men. <laughs> we know those things. Well, I don't doubt that. A lot of men are into that kind of a thing, but certainly not all. Of course, it can be all men. Anyway, maybe it's best I stop eating a snack. I don't think it will change anything, brother. Your associating with her is a problem. I think... I will tell her the man is making my life hectic because of her. Yes, but I should. And even if she doesn't like him, she can just pretend for a while and also be nice to him. Yeah. Yeah. Emeka is robbed of true companionship with his wife. She's more committed to her business than her marriage, and this robs him of someone to share his daily troubles with. So sometimes, Nkechi again gets to fit into the role of a companion for him, and it worries him. Kids going to bed. Were you expecting them to be awake at this time? Oh, sorry. Don't mind me. My dear, one moment. Please sit down. Has something happened? Not happened. Happening. What's that? Us. Us? I don't get you. This is an honest question I'm going to ask. Who are you really married to? What? Are you trying to accuse me of something here? It's not an accusation. It's a question. What kind of question is that? Let me rephrase myself. 
Are you married to me or to your business? Are you not glad that I'm helping you with some of the bills? Or would you rather carry all the burden yourself? Anytime I want to make a meaningful discussion, you get defensive. How can we make headway? That is true. If you don't like me doing what I am doing, just say so and I will sit at home for you. Your life is your work. Not fair. Other women do the same thing, yet they dedicate time to family. Maybe they are not as successful as I am. I deal with so much, you know. Making money shouldn't be at the expense of our marriage, my dear. That is the point. I hear you. Do you realize we get to see each other only at night? And you are usually too tired to chat or even do anything else? If you do what I do every day, you'll get tired too. I am sick of sitting at home alone all day, every day. Then why don't you hang out like other men? Our neighbors watch football at the pub over a few beers. Isn't that what men do? I am not much of a drinker. And I am not good at making small talks either. Okay. I'll start closing early. Satisfied? I would appreciate it much. This is one of the many discussions that will ensue between the husband and wife over the same subject. In the following few days, she usually shows improvement, but after a while, she falls back to her old routine of keeping late nights. Emeka is a man of mild temperament. He avoids quarrels, but Uju is confrontational by nature. Emeka hates when they raise voices in conflict because of the children and the neighbors. His wife knows this weakness and she exploits it to her advantage. And so the unhappy trend remains. In fact, it's not what I wanted to say, but it kind of means the same thing. What did you want to say? That you like money. That's an unfair classification. Everybody likes money. But you have to agree our four guests can put their hands down lion's throats to bring out money. You can't say that for every tribe. That may be true. Or is as a result of the war. After the war, we were left to start from scratch with nothing. So let's just call it strong drive. Our forebears had strong will. You win. <laughs> and the winner deserves a prize. Oh, she wants to give me money. <laughs> <sighs> No, a massage. Okay. Provided nothing else is anticipated afterwards. I should be rewarded for a job well done, shouldn't I? Oh, if you're expecting a reward, you better forget it. Why are you always so mean to me? Because I have one body. And I can't overwork it to death. How can you call intimacy between us work? That is not nice. I'm sorry. But I am too tired for anything tonight. We have not been intimate for months now. And you call that marriage? I'm sorry. Okay. Do you know what? Why don't we make up a roster so that 
I can save up energy for action days. A timetable? Are you serious? It's practical. What happens to spontaneity? A timetable will make everything look like a joke. You are pigeonholing me into your schedule. What is that? Please. I don't have strength for this kind of talk this night. When a man is hungry for certain life necessities, he tends to get desperate. This situation is particularly dangerous here because every day and every night he's presented with the object of his desires. And the particular object in question is so inviting, so provocatively ripe, it's mind-blowing. To her, it's normal for her to dress like girls her age tend to dress these days. Today, he could not contain his excitement anymore. Okay, Do you know you are very beautiful? Mother. Oh, mother. But it's true. Your face, your body, everything is perfect. Mother, I, I, I don't know what to say. You don't have to say anything. I know all those boys in your class will be falling over themselves, trying to get your attention. <laughs> Mother, you're making me shy. Why? You're talking like I'm a stranger to you. Feel free with me, okay? Okay, sir. Look at me like a big friend that can help you with anything you need. Anything at all. Do you understand? Okay, sir. Yes, sir. It is only natural for things to get to this point eventually. And Mecca is a man without a social life. He does not go out to drink with the boys. He's always at home after work, and Nkechi is always in his face. Nkechi, to be truthful, is oblivious to her attractiveness. She has no idea that she's a sweet and ripe temptation that is constantly inviting him. Um, brother, you're back. Yes. Welcome, sir. Thank you. The food will soon be ready. It will really make me happy if 
feel relaxed whenever I'm around you. Okay? Okay, sir. Okay. of complex and strong emotions are churning up inside her right now. Chiefly among them is excitement of a sexual kind. She's happy and angry at herself for actually getting turned on when she should be repulsed. The chemistry between a man and a woman is intricate though. She, without knowing it, likes him deep within her subconscious. And the fact that he was standing so intimately close, almost without any space between them, while speaking in a low, soft voice, added to the cause of her stimulation. have no idea how standing so close to you made me felt. I could feel your body heat. You were excited, weren't you? You think I am terrible. I am not. Things have not been going on there between me and your sister. What's going on? She does not seem to think intimacy is important. So when I see you every day, looking all sweet and inviting, I can't help but get attracted to all of your goodness. Brother, I don't think he's right. But you can't deny the electricity that ran through us in the kitchen just now. A feeling like that cannot be wrong in itself. And so things are quickly becoming alarming. For a union between these two will be a violation of everything and more. It will not just be adultery. It will be incest. It will be the betraying of trust in the worst possible way between the husband and the wife. And also the worst kind of betrayal between two sisters. It will indeed be a tragedy. They both know the dangers, but their own desire is pulling them together like a magnet to iron.
What's up, girl? What's happening over there? Good for you. Where will I be? I'm always at home. Can you move away from the sound? It's too loud. Okay. That's very good. Um, I'd like to ask you something. Is this my neighbor? She wants to be sleeping with her sister's uh, husband. Can you imagine? Hm. Well, she said the, the, the man is handsome and he gives her money. Can you imagine? <laughs> oh my God. Why would you say such a thing? Why would you advise her to do such a thing? You're rotting to the core. Can you imagine? Well, anyway, I advise her is not an idea to even consider for a moment. In fact, I told her to tell her sister about it because that's what I'll do personally. <laughs> oh my God. Are you not a prostitute? Telling me to introduce the man to you. Anyway, I'm going to tell you everything, full details in school tomorrow. You're burning my credit, I beg. Press the red button, right now. <laughs> yes, I'll tell you everything. Okay, bye. <sighs> She is torn within. The temptation is great, but her sense of morality is coming to bear. She has decided she will not do it. In fact, she has decided to tell her sister about it. That will be the honorable thing to do. Kichi decides this will be the best time to tell her sister about it. She is trying to summon up the courage to talk here. What is it? Why are you staring at me like that? Have you not eaten yours? <laughs> Auntie, I've eaten. Don't mind me. It's just something little bothering me. What? It's about... Um... About what now? Auntie, it's about your job. You know, you're taking everything too much. You might get a potential through this though. God forbid. Hmm? God forbid. Haba, nobody has ever gotten it in my family. <laughs> and it's not a blood line thing. It could be stress. I read that from the internet the last night about a few days ago. And be careful. Be careful. I love you. That's why I'm telling you that. Please, madam. Can you please talk about something else? 
house today. It was fine. Nothing unusual happened. It was fine. Okay. Good. Mm. At the very moment she was about to tell her sister about her husband's advances, it struck her that her sister will overreact and blow everything out of proportion. When that happens, Emeka will hate her. Worse still, he could even deny it altogether since there will be no proof except her word against his. And if nothing can be proven, then she will become the bad person. When that happens, Emeka will decide that she leaves his house. In fact, she will have to leave the house in any case. Because whether her sister believes it or not, and he denies it or not, her sister will become suspicious, and that will mean her leaving the house anyway. She decided it's better not to rock the boat so violently. She decided she would deal with the problem on her own by telling the maker off. She could even record everything he would say to her on the phone secretly. That way, she would use it to threaten him any other time he tries touching her again. On hearing his arrival, Ukechi quickly grabs her phone and puts it on voice recorder and positions it very close so it can catch everything he will say. You are so fine, Oliver. I can't help touching you. Even the smell of your hair cream, the very sweet smell of your body, is driving me insane. I am even dizzy with hope. Excitement. No one has ever stimulated in me. So, it's not safe. The children are in the parlor, they can call me. You are right. Chi's defenses were systematically broken down by Emeka. She had forgotten one thing, her attraction to him. Quickly, she deletes the evidence she has collected and runs to do as he had told her. Right now, her body is burning with a desire that will rival Emeka's own. She wants him and she wants him back. Every common sense has vaporized from their heads, along with the consequences of what will happen if ever they are caught.
And so, their clandestine tryst started. It was a wine so overpoweringly sweet and addictive, they could not stop. This is not good. I know. Not good at all. I know. Please, let it never happen again. You are right. It won't. Ever. Maybe just once more. One last time. And then no more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Once again, you are right. much happiness all my life. Me neither. I wish it was me you are seen and married. Oh, I'll have been so happy. I love you. I love you so much. Did you hear what I just said? Yeah. I feel the same for you too. Really? But you know, all we can ever do is sneak around. I want every part of you to myself. You know, it's not possible. Who says we can elope, leave town, find a new place and start afresh? If I didn't have kids, we could have done it. But I can't leave my kids. Yeah, that's true. I could be your second wife. That is really close. No, it's not. Will it be possible for me to go and ask your parents for your hand in marriage when your sister is my wife? No, that's not what I meant. Okay. You can get another house for me in another part of the town where you can always come and visit me. It won't work. The only way we can continue to be together is like this. Maybe you, when you get into the university, we can think of something there. Please, let's not complicate things, okay? Okay. She has fallen headlong into that deep and senseless first love that teenagers experience for the first time in their lives. It is heady and overpowering. At this point, she's entertaining so many different scenarios that will see her become a Mecca's wife, including wishing that her sister gets hit by a car or even struck down by lightning. After all, she's been doing everything in the house like she's the wife. She might as well be.
Where are the kids? I sent them to the back of the compound to play with the neighbor's kids. Really? Yes, I thought you'd be hungry. And you'd like something to eat. A spice appetizer before you fill your stomach. What are you? A mind reader? <laughs> well, let's just say I know you better than you. Wife does. If you rather have it later, well. I want it now. Thank you. And so, Emeka is fed his favorite appetizer the moment he comes back from work. He eats it everywhere these days in the kitchen, on the couch in the bedroom, in the bathroom, everywhere. Sometimes even at night, when his wife is sleeping off her stress like a cop, he make her sneak out of bed to go meet Mutichi in her room for a quick snack. They were becoming quite careless, and carelessness can very quickly lead them to getting caught. So, I couldn't come to school today because um, I'm not feeling too well. <laughs> you just go. <laughs> what do you mean pregnant? I'm not pregnant, Joe. It's just, it's just headache and fever. It's just normal malaria symptoms. Don't ever say that kind of nonsense again. Don't even joke about it. What if he calls me at school? So? Is he not my sister's husband? That's the way he calls everybody in the family. He's just a nice person. Am I not the one that takes care of everybody in the in the house, the kids and, uh, and, and my sister? What are you talking about? He's just a nice man, that's all. He calls everybody in the family like that. I'm serious, I'm fine. It's just malaria. I'll make it to school on Monday. If I was pregnant, I would know, okay? <laughs> How would I know? Because I'll start vomiting every morning, of course. And I'm not doing that. Yeah, my, no my nose is more sensitive and I'm beginning to hate many smells. Well, it's been past 10 days I saw it last. It comes late later time. I'm used to it. No. Never more than four or five days. No, it's a lie! I'm not... Oh my God. Oh my God.
And so in tears, she opens up about everything. She begged her friend for advice on what to do. Her friend suggested an abortion at a good clinic that she has frequently used herself. But in case she has heard and seen many abortions gone wrong with the girls in her school, and she does not wish to suffer what they did, she is scared indeed. You don't look too happy. You want something? gentle with my patients. That is why they always return. Shall we? Follow you. Please, can you be there with me? Please. No need to worry. You are in good hands, okay? Come. Go, my dear. You will be fine.
happening in secret finally come to the light. The forbidden act portends dire consequences for a maker. She tried to pay the doctor to write a different reason for her death, but the doctor refused. The doctor knows definitely the truth will come out and he does not wish to risk losing his business or even going to jail for it will be a crime to conceal the true cause of her death. When the news of Nkechi's death spread, her confidant, the close friend she usually called for advice, opened up to Uju about what had been going on between Nkechi and her husband, and how she called to confess to the affair and the fact that she was pregnant. At this point, it wasn't only Nkechi's life that ended, so did Emeka's marriage to Nkechi. Emeka had to endure a year of legal battle before he was given a well-deserved jail term. Uju did not just lose a sister, she lost a husband and a happy family, all of which could have been avoided had she paid attention to her family instead of chasing money.